Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Correlation. I'm also going to put this in a playlist called Non-Parametrics. Here we're going to look at Kendall's Tau, which is a non-parametric measure of association between uh, two variables. So we assume we have an X and a Y. It's a bi some sort of bivariate relationship following some distribution. We have a sample size in. Now, before we start, let's look at some definitions. The first one is concordance, and that's between any two pairs. Okay, so we have, remember our data comes in pairs, so XI, YI, XJ, YJ. Now, they're concordant if they agree. So, like the I component is bigger than the J component in the X's, and the same way here, the I component is bigger than the J. The, they, like, agree. Or it could be the other way too, that the I component is less than J, but then the I component has to be less than the J and the Y. So they, they agree, they're concordant. Now, the probability of, of concordance is just the probability that they agree, this plus the probability of that. You know. Now, discordance is that they disagree, right? So here, the I component is bigger than the J component in the X's, but the I component is less than the J component in the Y's. Or the opposite. So it's I is less than J in the X's here, but I is greater than J in the, in the Y's. Right? They're discordant. They don't agree. And PD is going to denote the probability of discordance. <laughs> now, we define Kendall's tau as tau equal the probability of concordance minus the probability of discordance. And... and and if we think about it, it's not a bad, you know, formula. Because if, if, the, if there's perfect concordance, that means the probability of concordance is 1, and this is 0. Well, tau is 1. And that's kind of like Pearson's correlation or Spearman's correlation. If there's perfect discordance, then the probability of being discordant is 1, and this is 0. So tau is minus 1. And so it kind of varies between 1 and minus 1, just like Pearson's correlation and Spearman's correlation. Now, <coughs> excuse me, an, um, another way to think about this formula is this. If we look at the probability of concordance, remember that means the components have to agree. So here if we just look at the probability that xi is greater than xj, but not consider the y's, this probability is too big. But if we subtract out the probability that i is bigger than j and y is the y i is less than j, sort of the piece that we don't want, then this is the probability of concordance that you know where i component is greater than j. And then we have to do it for when i component is less than j. So if we just look at this piece, it's actually too big because this probability doesn't bring in the y's. So if we subtract out the part where they're discordant, you know, that i is less than, xi is less than xj, and the y is reversed, then this piece right here is actually the probability of concordance, you know, the, the combination. So now if we take this piece and bring it down, and this piece and bring it down, well, this over here is the probability of discordance. So the probability of concordance is actually 1 minus the probability of discordance. And that makes sense, right? But that means we can rewrite tau in these terms. 2 times probability of concordance minus 1. Or 1 minus 2 times the probability of discordance. Now, <coughs> let's assume that x and y are independent. Both are continuous, and that means the probability of a tie is zero. And we note that go beforehand, we don't know if i is going to be bigger than j or j is going to be bigger than i. So these two probabilities are equal. Okay. So now if we look at the probability of concordance, then before, remember, th this was one. So it's the probability of xi less than xj and yi less than xj, but since they're independent, we can break that probability into two pieces. And then plus, and of course, this is the other way to be concordant. 
and since they're independent, we can break them apart. Now, since this is true, you know, we don't know this probability is the same. We don't know which is going to be bigger. We can actually replace it with the opposite here, right? But this statement is a probability of discordance. So that means when x and y are independent, then tau is zero, right? Because probability of concordance minus probability of discordance equals zero. And that's exactly like Pearson's correlation and Spearman's correlation. But also note that in general, the reverse is not true. Just because this is zero doesn't mean they're independent. And that's kind of the same problem we have with Pearson's and, and uh, Spearman's. Now, there's some exceptions if the underlying distribution is normal, so I know that. But I'm just saying, in general, the reverse is not true. <clears throat> now, let's come up with a sample estimate for tau. Um, now, let's look at an, uh, another definition of probability of concordance. Now, notice that here that we want them in the same direction, you know. Um, and so we're just going to do it this way. So... This pro if this product is positive, that means that they're concordant, right? So the I component is bigger than the J in both cases, so we get a positive number, positive, positive. Product is positive, it's positive. Now, if it's the other way, the other way to be concordant, if that I is less than J and I is less than J here, they're both negative, but the product is positive. So really, we just need to see if this product is positive, then they're concordant. And just the opposite, if this product is negative, it means they're discordant. So that's the probability of discordant. And we can look at the probability that they're tied. You know, if xi is equal to xj or yi is equal to yj, then it's considered a tie. We don't, they're not concordant or discordant. They're just tied. So we're going to create a function hi, which is a function of the i data point and the j data point. And it's going to be this, the sign of this difference in the x's times the sign of this difference in the y's. So we're trying to recreate this product with this, but <clears throat> we're only, and we only need to know the sign, you know, are these positive, zero, or negative. And this sine function, SGN, it's one if the argument is positive, zero if it's zero, and negative one if it's negative. Now, there is a SING, the sine function in R, that is exactly this. But here, so XIJ is a sine function. Now, what values can this product take on? Remember, these sine functions can either only be 1, 0, negative 1. So these products can only take on the value of 1, 0, or negative 1. So when we look at its expected value, it can assume a 1, and how can it assume a 1? That's if they're concordant, so that's probability of concordance. It can assume a 0, but that's if only if they're tied, so it's the probability of being tied. And it's minus 1 times the probability of discordant. So that's 0, That's so we get this. But this is how we define tau. So Hij is an unbiased estimate for tau, the, or Kendall's tau, you know, the, the rank correlation or the association between two variables. But here, we're only looking at two data points. And if we collect a sample size n, somehow we want to use all the data. So this is the definition of tau. So this is the development. This is actually the true definition. So t is equal to 1 over n choose 2. And the sum from 1 to n, so i goes from 1 to n and j equals 1 to n, but i is always less than j, and it's this product. So it goes through every point and, and calculates this product. So if I can bring it, let's say we have four data points, it looks at this, these two data points, and then these. And it goes to these two data points, then these two, and then these two. So it looks at all possible pairs <coughs> and calculates this uh, you know, this function, and then it adds them all up, and that's Kendall's tau. That's exactly what it is. And so this is a sample estimate of Kendall's tau. But now let's calculate its expected value of tau. So the expected value of this, it, the expectation goes through the uh, summation signs, and remember, Hij is this product, just shortcut. But we said this was unbiased. So we're, so this is tau. 
we're summing tau in choose two times. So we get this, but those cancel leaving tau. So tau is an unbiased estimate for Kendall's tau, you know, so the population tau. Now let's do some examples before we call our quits today. <clears throat> so we have data points. Let's say we have four data points. We want to calculate Kendall's tau. So it's, it's one over n choose two. So it's four choose two. And then we look at each data point. So here, let's look at the first two. So, and, and as long as you go in the same direction, that's what matters. So 10 minus eight is positive. 2 minus 6 is negative, and here 10 minus 22 is negative, 2 minus 4, oh, is negative, and then 10 minus 2 is positive, 2 minus 0 is positive, and then we go to these two. So we got negative and positive, and then, then we go to these two. So it's positive and positive, then we go to these two, it's positive and positive. So this sum is two, um, one over six, so it's one third. So Kendall's tau is 0.33. Now let's do it for uh, uh, Spearman's row. But, but here we have to use the ranks. So we rank the x's. So this is the third largest, the second largest, the fourth and then this is the smallest and then we do then we rank the y's and then we take the difference between these ranks one minus two one and zero and then uh, Spearman's row is one minus uh, six divided by n n squared minus one and then it's the difference squared so one four one zero add them up you get 6, this is 1 tenth, uh, 0.4. So Spearman's row is 0.4. And so they're, they're sort of related. And if we were to calculate Pearson's correlation, we would get 0.46. So they're all within the ballpark of each other. <clears throat> now, one note before we end the video is we did not address the topic of ties, really. We didn't. So any research into non-parametrics should and must consider how to handle ties in the data. It's actually a big area of topic. Um, there's a, there's a, a method that's used the most, and then there's other approaches that say they're better, but in some cases they're not. So it's a, it's a wide open topic for debate. Well, this is all I have for this video. I've posted the notes on Gumroad. You can look in the description if you want to download those. I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.